everybody that should not have died, died. Well, except for Blackson. Blackson. Whatever his name is. Yeah, he deserved every bit of that beating and that bullet. Diamond shows a little bit more grit and gangster, but then ultimately is still gentle in the end. And one loss is taking Tommy back to his forceful and unmerciful roots. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Vane, coming to you right here on Erica Vane TV with another Power Book 4 Force video. The final or the finale episode breakdown video. Won't be my final video. I got a bunch of videos to talk about some of the things that went down in the finale, some of the things that we can expect in season two, as well as some crossovers that we can go ahead and speak on now that they have seeded additional footage in this finale. If you're not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you don't miss out on any of my Power Book 4 videos, coverage, any of my Power Universe coverage, in all honesty. We know that we're getting Power Book 3, Raising Canaan Season 2 this summer, and Power Book 2 Ghost is currently filming, and we got a surprise little bit of, of footage back in New York, which is going to be linking Power Book 2 and Power Book 4 together. So y'all know I'm going to keep you updated, and you don't want to miss out on any of the conversations around anything happening in the Power Universe. So go ahead, join the tribe, hit subscribe. And while you at it, on your favorite social media site, whether that is Instagram or TikTok or Twitter or even Facebook, go ahead, follow, subscribe, and like your girl, ericavane.com, all spelled out on all platforms. Also, the links to my social media are in the description box down below. I live reacted on my IG stories for the Power Book 4 Force <laughs> finale. And if you're following me, then you won't miss out on content like that. I tend to live tweet as well. I tend to give additional content in a moment. A lot of people seem to be enjoying my reactions as I'm angered by the things that go down. And you know, I'm able to pull myself together, cultivate some intelligent thoughts and not just be cursing a lot <laughs> in my videos. But if you want to see that part of it too, then you want to want to follow me on your favorite social media sites. Again, it's ericavane.com spelled out linked in the description box down below. But without further ado, let's talk about the sad ass finale. Well, I can't even say that because the finale itself was not sad. It was just one thing that happened in it. And we're going to go ahead and talk about that right now because I still have yet to be able to process it. Took, took Easter off. Hope you all had an amazing Easter with your family. Resurrection Sunday. Didn't drop the video on Sunday. Bringing y'all this video on Monday. And I'm still trying to figure out how in the hell the realest one in the room, the realest one in the quarry, the, the most, like, the trillest, the illest, the one you want on your team. How the hell did Liliana catch a bullet and Claudia hasn't even been grazed with a bullet yet? Sis ain't even been pistol whipped. Smacked. Just backhand smacked from like way back. She ain't been punched in her nose. How? How? I am very, very confused and downright pissed if I do say so myself. You mean to tell me we had to lose Liliana at the end of season one, but we still got a roll with Jannard, Vic, and Claudia? Hell no. Nah. One of them three musketeers had to fall too, and none of them did, y'all. And I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get over it. And I damn sure know that Tommy ain't going to be able to get over it. This season, we saw a Tommy Egan who was battling grief, took more time to think, pulled every lesson that he could remember, muster, cultivate from ghosts in the years of business partnership and brotherhood with ghosts and created a new Chicago Tommy. One that didn't just move with force, who did, wasn't just impulsive, wasn't quick to just kill somebody he was more strategic he was political he took time to think and tried his best to parlay he wasn't no whore he wasn't no punk but he definitely moved with strategy to him and congratulations claudia i hope you enjoyed that tommy that you got to experience because now that you put a bullet in liliana he is dead and never to return I can totally see season two, Tommy, is shooting first and asking questions later. 
at the end of the episode, we get to see him let Diamond know, like, it's cool that you didn't carve out this little corner that's all yours. You decided to give your brother a, a get out of get out of death free pass after he just tried to light your ass up, and you decided to give him probably the best territory and your barbershop. That's cute and all, but I'm finna take this whole damn Chicago. Mm-hmm. The whole map. That's what I want. I don't care about Dahlia. I don't care about them Flins. I don't care about these Serbians. I don't care about CBI at all, honestly, because you about to be rebuilding with these little six corners that you didn't, you didn't, you didn't scraped up. I mean, we brothers and all. We, we getting to be brothers and all, but I'm finna take all of Chicago. Now, Tommy, the, the, the saving grace, I think, that will be for like Tommy's mental and to keep him a little bit level-headed is JP and DMAC. Liliana to me has definitely gotten to a place of being more than just his right hand, more than just his lieutenant. She was family. So I kind of put her on the level of a JP, a DMAC, and even a Kate, even though he's stressed out about Kate, even a Kate. And the fact that he still does have some family to be able to live for, he's not going to completely devolve. But I can definitely see after all that they have done, after all that they have been through, and then specifically watching how quick Vic was to turn on him. Tommy was the one who literally gave you a car and told you about your father, tipped you off about your father and gave you an out and you instantly flipped on him. Claudia, Tommy the one who you brought this drug to and he built the infrastructure for your whole damn drug organization. He built, he gave you the game plan of how to scale it. He gave you the distribution network. He literally laid everything out for you. And then in a moment's notice, your daddy finally sees you and now all of a sudden turn on Tommy. Well now, they finna see what it looked like when Tommy turned on them. And I can't wait to see it. Like I, I really, I really just cannot wait for everybody's Christmas to be canceled next season. Get us a whole new batch of villains because if Tommy don't spray every single Flynn and a Jannard, we gonna have to talk power writers. We gonna, y'all gonna have to step outside the writers room for me real quick. Just step outside. Mm -mm. We not about to wait a year and Claudia don't catch no bullet next year. Y'all let me know in the comment section down below how you feel after watching the finale. I haven't even really got into <laughs> all of what has happened, but that those thoughts that I just laid out for y'all, that is really what is sitting at the top of my mind and probably will plague me for the next month. It's the audacity for me, just wow. But in this episode, quite a lot happened. Shout out to the director, Dion Taylor. They brought in a feature film director who has done a bunch of amazing, dope things that you have probably seen. Go ahead and Google him. His uh, resume is very extensive and you have definitely seen a movie that he's done. But shout out to Dion because he definitely brought the feature film feel to the finale there was a lot happening i feel like at the beginning it was moving a little bit slow and we were getting caught up on like why everybody was making decisions and the plan being laid out because you know walter called in the four horsemen from dublin and they were supposed to be the big hitters and now y'all ain't got no horsemen all behind a lie i guess you gotta keep the lie alive huh walter keep the lie alive you be watching martin i can't <sighs> So we go out, we go throughout the episode and we really, at the beginning, we're watching Tommy win after win after win. He's catching them slipping, he's baiting them into traps and, you know, dropping for, dropping horsemen left and right. And we should have knew then, we should have knew then that Tommy was able to go up 3-0 on them, almost getting a shot at Vic when they tried to come and ambush him at the lab. Claudia, girl, I know you thought you were smart, but nothing about that was smart. You and Tommy are not cool. You already stated where you were, like how you felt about it. Of course, if he texts you talking about something about a damn drop, it was going to be a setup. And you supposed to think that you big and bad. Ugh, I can't even get over the fact that by the end of the episode, she had this little random ass mullet or, or, or mohawk mullet situation. You, What are you, a Power Ranger pussycat doll? You are not bad. You're not scaring nobody, honey. You're not like... I mean, you did put a bullet in fucking Liliana, girl. You put a bullet in Liliana. But I don't even know if that was on purpose. You was aiming at her, but you still don't give me danger, honey. It's not giving danger. It's not giving criminal mastermind. It's not giving queen pin. It's still giving little scared girl who wants her daddy to pat her on the back and give her the keys to the kingdom so she can go ahead and ruin it. Quiet as kept. Yo, I really just want to see Claudia outside. 
moving on. While Liliana continued to just show her loyalty to the very end, where she messed up in this episode is that she let the doctor go. But I get it. I got it the moment that she decided to do it. Because from what she recalls, when Tommy finds no use for you or thinks that you could possibly become a liability, then he tries to take you out. And that's the same thing that, ha that he had planned for Liliana back in uh, New York. Now she knew she was good, but she had developed this rapport with the doctor and she knew that the doctor wasn't going to be good. Because at the end of the day, Liliana knows how to make Dahlia and maybe JP knows how to make Dahlia. I'm not really 100% sure about that just yet, but Liliana knows how to make Dahlia. So at the end of the day, the doc is kind of expendable. So instead of putting her in a position so that she could be disposed of, Liliana tries to give her money so that she can go. However... This is what happens when you help hoes who don't come from your cut or your breed of loyalty, Liliana. Because earlier on in the season, you all recall that she told the doc that JP was Tommy's brother? That information came out in this, in this episode because when the doc is trying to get out of town with all her Louis Vuitton luggage and this and that, girl, you could have bought all new stuff. You should have went straight from the lab to the bus or to the train. Girl, to the subway, to something. She ordered a fancy-ass car and brought out all this Louis Vuitton luggage so that she could try to run out. And guess who's sitting in the damn back seat waiting for her to get in the car? Now look at you, back in another trap, stuck in another lab, under a girl who is even more, I'm gonna say ruthless, but not in a dangerous way, because I said what I said. Claudia is not fully like gangster, gangster, dangerous. She just unhinged. So congratulations, Doc. You played yourself, and now you trapped with crazy, crazy and stupid. And ultimately, that becomes the the little bit of information that the Flynn's need to be able to tip the ties in this episode, snatch up JP, create this moment where they're trying to parlay for JP's life and they ask for Tommy to give his life up in exchange for JP's. And that's when we had this little melee at whatever this little quarry is. It was going fine and dandy until it wasn't. Liliana took out the fourth and final horseman. Tommy was beating that ass when it came to Vic over behind <laughs> the little truck. Had Walter shaking in his boots. And Diamond was trying to put the fear of God in Gennard, but he is the devil. So clearly that's not going to work. I really, you know what? The second thing that's just really not sitting well in my spirit after watching this episode, the fact that Diamond let Gennard walk away. You let your enemy see another day so that he can come and kill you on that next day. Why, sir? I get that you all zen and peaceful and whatnot, and I know that he is your brother, but he sent four in there to try to light you up. They was ready to spray that barbershop like it was a dirty car in a car wash. And you talking about you owe him a chance at life? You owe him another chance to take your life. Let me tell y'all how I think it's going to go next season because this, again, is sitting at the top of my spirit. And I'm hoping that y'all are okay with this breakdown because I'm really not going to give y'all the play-by-play -play of what happened in the episodes. I'm really just giving you my thoughts on all the fallout, okay? Next season, we are going to have a Jason's Lyric moment because... Diamond is getting very close with Adrian, who ain't going nowhere. And by then, hopefully, sis has learned a little bit, like, shut up when I tell you to go. Grab your bag and duck your head. Just listen. That's how you don't get dead. I can see a pregnancy coming, and it is going to be Jannard that makes this woman miscarry and or kills her. And or for all of this, honestly, y'all, I could totally see Jannard playing like he's trying to be peaceful with him. But Jannard has... A certain level of snake that's just in him he will never not be jealous of diamond his position his strength his poise his power and I just have in my mind playing out y'all know from Jason's lyric that moment when his crazy ass brother was like you gonna choose her over me before he shoots lyric mm-hmm so congratulations, Diamond. You played yourself in Adrian because it's gonna come down to you possibly losing Adrian, losing your new C, and yes, I'm going there, y'all. I said what I said. All for you to have to circle back and pull a bullet in Jannard that you should have put in his ass 
on Sunday. Congratulations. He's coming back for you and he's going to come back to not only try to take your life, but try to destroy any and everything that you build from here on out. Because whether Diamond got this little raggedy circle, the six, seven, eight, nine, ten corners that he might have because he gave Jannard the rest, he gonna make it do what it do and it's gonna turn into something. And Jannard is gonna find out and Jannard is gonna be jealous and Jannard is gonna try to take it. And Diamond, again, you brought this on yourself because you should have put a bullet in that boy's head when you had the chance. That sounds very heartless, y'all. Y'all gotta tell me in the comment section down below how y'all feel about it because just talking and creating this video, I'm, I'm alone. I haven't really tracked Twitter or anything like that to see how y'all feeling about it. But I'm feeling like Jannard's ass gotta go. And I want Diamond to be the one to do it. And I get that that's hard, but after the point where someone tries to, like, unmercilessly kill you i think then you lose all decorum and respectability and you might still love the person but it's them or you right right aside from that some of the best moments in the episode revolved around tommy and his burgeoning family kate pops her goofy ass up and she's running around miriam's house breaking up walls looking for money ma'am where's all the money that ghost left you he left you so much money, you were fine to just walk away and disown Tommy because you love ghosts more anyway. Do you have something about black sons, Kate? Because it's given you don't love your white son the same way that you love your black son. You show up here and you kissing all up on JP. You just want to see D-Mac. You just all enamored with the melanin, ma'am. What is happening, honey? I digress. But... Kate returning becomes a really, really great moment in the episode and Tommy switches right back into whether he has disdain or not for this woman. Ma, and when he says it, it's the same way that he says it in the original power. The, the, the love is still there while he is still very frustrated with her as a person. And it's really, really dope to see. She's able to get Tommy to take her to the hospital, introduce her to JP, introduce her to Z-Mac, and now Tommy has his whole family, the rest that he has left, in Chicago with him, and I really think that Kate is going to stay around for a while. Now, how she's going to be able to make amends to JP for just leaving him, or what the story is going to be, only time will tell, but I will say that JP, Kate, and D-Mat and that whole little family reunion was one of the, the best and like happiest moments of this episode. Now the most intriguing moment of the episode came at the very end and actually had nothing really to do with Chicago. We get a quick glimpse jump over to, to uh, New York where Jenny Sullivan is just leaving out of a courtroom and then we get to see Blanca who was getting wind of what's happening in Chicago and and Asian Medina has climbed his way up to become what is now Blanca's boss. Medina wants her to stay focused on what she got to do over in the Power Book 2 Ghost World, which is the, the figuring out who killed her asset, Mecca. Blanca is getting wind of what's happening in Chicago, the federal agents, the local age, the CPD, the AUSA, Stacey Marks, who was also Dre on The Shy by Lena Waithe. I break down The Shy as well. So if y'all haven't already, go and check out my The Shy playlist and get into that. That series will be returning soon. So we're going to be talking about that a lot. And we just giving all the Shy Town love to some of these actors that are doing on, that are crossing over to various your shows and I love it but AUSA Marks as well as the CPD they don't know who the hell Tommy is they got a half of a portrait of him but guess who do know who he is Blanca do Medina do Jenny Sullivan do and all it's going to take is for the two agencies to talk and now she gets real and we're going to have an amazing 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 crossover season three of Power Book 2 Ghosts and season two of Power Book 4 Force it's going to be lit. All right, y'all. That's all I got for the Power Book 4 Force season finale, season one finale breakdown. Let me know if you felt like I missed anything. You want me to talk about something else in the comment section down below. Also, let me know what your thoughts, reactions, feelings, all of it. Let me know how you are thinking and feeling in the comment section down below. Give this video a like if you made it all the way to the end of this video because I know that you liked it. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do it. Ain't nobody looking. Go ahead, you can click it. Nobody looking. 
go ahead so you don't miss out on any more videos uh, like i said i have a couple of character as well as story videos to, to continue the conversation around the season finale and deep dive a little bit into specific storylines and what we can expect from decisions that were made in the season finale you don't want to miss it subscribe join the tribe and i'll see you in the next one